This is Dispatches from Myrtle Beach with Charles Neal and my son Link from Good Mythical Morning. How you doing, son? Doing good, Dad. Glad to be here in your audience. Uh, and I, I'm trying to figure out, uh, I'm looking at myself <laughs> and you're wearing me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You don't remember this shirt? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's at least there's at least twenty of you on this shirt. Okay. Yeah, you don't remember the shirt? Didn't we wear this? Yeah. When, about a year ago, actually. About a year ago, I just found it hanging in the closet. I was like, You should also have one that? in your closet. Yeah, you should have one, Dad. I actually have. Uh, yeah, I, didn't, I think I still I have. Don't it. have uh, I have the yeah, one. I, I have the one that has that would be my correct. face all yeah. over it here. I need <laughs> okay. to give that one to you. Because I saw that one, I was like, "Oh, here's a, this has my face all over it." I'm like, well, "I'm not gonna wear that." And then I saw yours. I was like, "Oh yeah, this is mine. Mine has your face on it." I'll get yours too. Okay. Now I do remember, point. but the reason I didn't remember because I didn't ever get my shirt with your face on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You got to come back out here. We'll do it, do some of these in person again next time you come out. Oh yeah, yeah. I think we. have Trying to do that, but okay. I don't know how that's working out. But. Oh, all right. Well, we'll work. We'll work something out. I'm sure. How about mm -hmm. you? How you doing? Well, I've been pretty good. Uh, it's nice to be getting back and seeing you like once a week, and that's yep. me and you talking. And your toe getting better? Yeah, my toes well. Okay, it's, good. It's it's good. I yeah. don't have to worry about it anymore. Mm -hmm. No. No, we won't no need to worry about it anyway. So, speaking of well, uh, we 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 should give an update on Nana. Na Nana is uh, doing very well. Waiting to go back to the doctor that did the surgery in August the twenty third, where he'll kind of just turn her loose. But she stayed in rehab. For 21 days, mm -hmm. and I don't know, and and she was doing like she needed. She could get up and walk enough to get get out of the bed by herself and uh, go to the to the bathroom by herself and with, walking with the walker and some different stuff. But Link and I think you talked to my sister so. I, I don't know if those people uh, got mine and my mom and your nana out of there in 21 days because she was doing what she was supposed to, or them people were scared to death of your, my sister and your aunt Tisi because <laughs> she was she was giving them people hell because they weren't doing what they were supposed to and get giving her the right her medications medicine and stuff, like she yeah. was supposed to. And when her 21 days was up, they sent her on down the road. I don't know, you know. Of course, mm -hmm. in Mama's home at, at Trace's house, and I talked to her. I, yeah, I talked to her about every day. But uh, she was doing good, and Trace said she was doing good. So, uh, you know, uh, for, for a 92-year-old, it had that hip surgery done again, and... And yeah. go to rehab and stay there three weeks and kind of going back home to Trace's house and where she's getting to where she might in in the near future get to go back home to her house. So she's and doing really good. So you heard from Nana the conversation that I had with her before she went into surgery. Mm, and what yes, I didn't. and what I she told you what I told her. Yeah, she told yeah, she told me when you you know before she went into you said, well, I sure hope you make it through the surgery, Nana, so I don't have to come back from Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I said, and she said, well, I don't. If something happens to me, I don't want you to come back. I was like, Nana, I'm just joking with you. You know that I will be there, and I'm just trying to use this to to give you even more motivation. <laughs> To, to fight your way through this surgery and do what it takes to to get better. I don't think she needed yeah. that motivation. I don't know if she, I think she took it as a joke, but I was like, don't make don't you make me 
Don't you make me leave my vacation on account of you croaking. Having it. Yeah. Yeah. You having hips because you failed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But listen, that's all on you. I ain't got nothing to do it, with it. It, it was yeah. a joke, and but it, it was a risky it, joke, right? Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was risky enough that I called you on it. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> She's doing good. It worked. Yeah. See? Something worked anyway. Yeah. yeah. It, it worked. Yeah. My joke. Between, my joke worked. Between your work and the good Lord looking after her and the doctor taking care of it, it all worked. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm and then we don't have to rank the yeah. like what had the what had the biggest effect of those three things. They yeah. all they all did. Yeah. Well, I didn't have I I'm not taking any responsibility on how well she did. Uh, so I, I'll just leave it at that. Okay. You know? All right. That's fair. But you know what, Logan? Uh, yeah. We're talking about um, our Nana, my mama, mm-hmm. and I, I'm going to, uh, I, I think we got to give a special holler out to Logan's Mima. Okay, so of course Logan is our is our producer here at Dispatches. She's in the room with me, right? But um, I think she's on the phone with you all the time. <laughs> That's true. Well, so what is no. the deal? You 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 need well, to do what? It kind of it kind of and how old's your me, Ma, Logan? She just turned eighty three yesterday. Okay, well, she she's an avid. Fan of oh. the, my podcast or okay. ours. Yes, yes, it's yours. And listens to it and all of it. But she, I think this is the way this works. And Logan, you can tell me not, but she called Logan on the phone one day and told us that me and you was getting a little risque. Oh. Uh huh. And so. Logan's me, Ma. I, I'm I'm giving you a holler out today and telling you, well, I'm sorry on some of the things that me and Link get into on the show, <laughs> but you know, I got to thinking about this, and it must not have been bad enough that you quit watching. So <laughs> I, we're gonna tr- we're gonna try to keep doing doing. You know, probably like we've been doing because, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, Let's I, be I'm real. kind of like you, uh, me, Ma. Uh, I, I'm too old to change, and you know, whatever, a lot of most of the time, whatever goes through my head comes out my mouth. And there's a lot of people that can tell you that, mm-hmm. <laughs> including <laughs> my wife, Nancy, and, and you too, me, Ma. So, but I'm sorry, but we. We'll try not to be too risque, but we we just having fun. Well, she, I don't and, even know what she's talking about. Let me give some a little bit of background. Oh, was so, there something specific? So you, please she, do. She texted me a little <laughs> while back, and she uses talk to text, so it's kind of like one giant run-on sentence. Okay, yeah. She says, I just thought you might be interested in that last night when I couldn't sleep at all at 3 a.m. I told Echo Amazon to turn on the dispatches for Myrtle Beach with those two fellas. So that w- so that was pretty amusing, I guess. I'm, I listened to maybe two episodes anyway. I want it. I want you to know that I'm I am sort of with it. Okay, take care. Bye now. <laughs> okay. And, and then she called me, and then she said, "Now they mentioned a Logan. That's not you, is it?" And I was like. Yes, that, that was me. <laughs> and then she like fell out of her chair. <laughs> oh my God. She's like, I'm going to keep listening. Oh. So then I get a call from my mom and we are talking. And then she was like, now Mima's just not a, kind of upset about how raunchy it gets. <laughs> it's like, oh, God. So then I told, then she meant, my Mima mentioned it to me. And then I was like, well, it's not me. And then, which is, not mm-hmm. fully true because yeah, yeah, I am involved. You're involved, uh, but and- yeah, you can you can throw dad under the bus. I and I I like the fact that dad he just kind of took it all. He didn't yeah. put it on me. I thought I thought you were going to say dad that like it was it was me driving the raunchy train. <laughs> oh no, you know you, you you keep telling me this is my podcast. So I mean, if, <laughs> if Logan's me, Ma calls in. 
I'm taking full responsibility okay. no. for that. Yeah. Yep. So she. Uh, yeah. But we're just being honest. I mean, we're just being we're just being real, and we're but we're also being silly. And we yeah, it gets you know we're human. Mm-hmm. And you we know, need, Meemaw the needs to get a little raunchy. Is what I think. Mm-hmm. Some of the, some Something of the tells me you've been people raunchy. send in to us. Uh, I, I can't help what they send in. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> but I just wanted to say that. You're I'm sorry, sorry Meemaw. Love you. Meemaw doesn't become a Meemaw unless there's a little bit of risque things happening. That's that's true. So I think did, that's pretty neat that she woke up was awake at woke up and couldn't sleep at three o'clock in the morning and t- told her. What was it? Uh, the echo. Told to look at echo and look up them two guys on that podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mima. Yeah, keep keep listening. We'll, we we will not we won't say anything else raunchy or risque. We promise. Hmm. Or you can call us on it and. Send or you can call, call us on again. It. Yeah. yeah, you can just keep calling me. Mm-hmm. I'll just mm-hmm. keep yeah. saying I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Won't be the uh, won't be the first time I had to apologize for some something I've done <laughs> uh, the second time. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. New GMM and Mythical tumblers are available now at mythical.com. Look how pretty. Pick up yours now and keep all your babies nice and whole all summer long. <laughs> okay, so that is bevies. It's an abbrevi- <laughs> it's a um a shortened word for beverages well, that people say now. Your bevy. Bevies. Okay. <laughs> bevies. All right. Yeah, all your bevies. <laughs> First thing coming to my head was Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> Damn, I thought. Okay. You're not wrong. <laughs> I reckon we have to do that again. We could just do and keep all (laughs) your bevies nice and cold all summer long. Pick up yours now and keep all your bevies nice and cold all summer long. Nice. Now you can say bevies. You learned another word. Bevies. Yeah. (laughs) Why do you want to learn a new language? Maybe you have an upcoming international trip, want to connect with a family member or friend, understand a certain pop culture, or just want to learn a new skill. In comes Rosetta Stone, the most trusted language learning program, available on desktop or as an app. It truly immerses you in the language you want to learn. Rosetta Stone has been a trusted expert for 30 years, with millions of users and 25 languages offered. It provides fast language acquisition with no English translations, so you really learn to speak, listen, and think in that language. Plus, their built-in True Accent feature gives you feedback on your pronunciation. It's like having a personal trainer for your accent. Don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a very limited time, Dispatches from Myrtle Beach listeners can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 50% off. Visit rosettastone.com slash dispatches. That's 50% off unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Redeem your 50% off at rosettastone.com slash dispatches today. It's time for another edition of Myrtle Beach Mailbag. Link, we got an email from Alice. Okay. And says, I'm Alice from Northern Italy, and I've been following dispatches from the very first episode. Wow. Thank you, Alice. I, fi- I finally got to meet Rhett and Link during the Mi- Good Mythical Tour in Raleigh. At the end of the show, when we were applauding, I apparently clapped my hands so hard, I literally popped a vessel in my left ring finger. <laughs> It went blue, and it got swollen for a while. But fortunately, it didn't hurt too bad, and a few days later, it was all he all healed. Wow, I didn't know you could clap your finger to, to that degree. I don't know. She, she, she was having a good time with everything that was going on, and she said, however, 
This prompted me to ask the question, what is the weirdest or funniest injury you and Link ever got? <laughs> well, have we ever both had this, uh, the same injury at the same time? I don't, I don't think, I don't think it can be that serendipitous. No. All right, you go first. What's the weirdest injury or funniest injury you've ever gotten? Well, Alice, when uh, I remodeled a hundred and some year old house back from like two thousand. From really 1999 until like 2003 before we moved in it. And I tore the roof off of it and was sheeting the roof, and I was doing all this by myself. And I was crawling down the roof and had the nail gun was nailing and holding something, and I looked at my hand, and this finger right here that's still kind of bent a little bit, it was laid all the way down just like that. Okay. And it would not come back up. It was just like that. It was touching the center of the palm of your hand. Palm of my hand. And these other fingers are sticking just straight up as they could be. I mean, and I looked and I said, man, ain't that a heck of a thing. <laughs> I mean, and it, it didn't hurt. It never, I didn't feel nothing pop, hurt, or nothing. So I was working on that roof, so I... I I uh, did a little more stuff, and I said, well, I can't do what I'm doing. But I, so I just crawled down, went and got me some duct tape and taped it around these three fingers here and taped it up straight and just left it like that and finished working. And then okay. I said, there ain't no need for me to go to the doctor. It's kind of the weirdest. It, I've had some injuries, but about the weirdest injury I ever had. So I left it like that, and then I'd take it loose and... It would still fall back down. So I finally I went to the doctor and they said, well, it'll probably straighten back out. And so I spent all that money and he wanted me to put a splint on it. And I said, I don't need no splint. I didn't tape this thing to my other three fingers. I just tape it up there and leave it like that. <laughs> I, I don't need a splint. So that's what I did, Alice. Okay. And after about this going on for about a month, it, it finally kind of set for right at the top of it. It it straightened right back out. Hold it up. Hold it up. So I guess that you didn't tape it. You didn't tape the the fingertip. I read. Is that, no, is that what no. happened? You should have. Maybe you should have used a splint. I don't know. That might. Maybe that would have done better. Uh, yeah, I thought you were going to tell me that you nailed your finger to the palm of your hand. Ooh. But you didn't do that. What was their explanation? That the tendon. It, I guess it just or something? pulled that tendon. I, and I asked him, I said, well, did it come out of socket and just go back in or something? Now, I didn't ever get a good answer about all that. And, and it um, never hurt? So never hurt. That's weird. Mm, so. I think the weirdest injury I ever had was, um, I, was uh, I was trimming uh, I was trimming some hairs in my my nether region and uh i got just and i was using clippers and i got distracted by something or i had to do something had to had to move and uh as i was moving to like shut a door or something i think i swung the clippers on this on this uh, something else that was swinging that was attached is to this, me. Is this scissors clippers or like bzz, like a that could buzz give you like a uh, oh buzz your hair with a military cut like okay bzz, plugged in in a wall type of thing, hmm. and it was I was gesturing with it or moving my hand and I, I went I nicked the the end of my member. You trying to recircumcise yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Double circumcision type situation. <laughs> <laughs> and that was blood. Oh, I bet. Yeah, it was. It wasn't. It was just a nick, but it did scare me. And I think that uh, I don't know. I need to. I need to. I need to give it a look. It's been over a year now. It's. I, I think there might be a. There might be a notch. Taking out. 
Hmm. But I, so it's I, been a year, and you ain't even looked since then to see if something's missing. Well, uh, yeah, I've, I mean, I haven't missed a beat. I'm just going to tell you. I, I I went to the doctor. He said, "Well, we need to put a splint on." I said, "No, I'll just tape it to my thigh." <laughs> just wrap. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> that's a scary. You know, that's a, that's the place you don't want to be swinging clippers. I learned my right. lesson after that. I got real careful after that. That's my weird injury, <laughs> Alice. Sorry. But Mima, she needed to know. She needed to hear mm-hmm. it. And and people yeah. need to know. It's like you gotta be careful. You know, if you if you're doing if you're trimming your hedges and then somebody somebody calls you or you gotta make a run to do something, turn off the turn off the weed whacker before you start getting into motion. Yeah. You never cut the end of your wiener, Dad? Do have I ever cut my wiener? Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. I've only done it once. Well, this don't have no Alice. This don't have anything to do with what, something me and uh, Link did. But about three weeks ago, Nancy was had gypsy and she was clipping the hair around her mouth and getting on. And Link knows gypsy don't have no teeth. Right. And she and she keeps her. Tongue hung out to the side like that all the time. Oh no, she okay. And she and she was and she all of a sudden she clipped and and she clipped right the edge of Gypsy's tongue, tongue, right over there. And Nancy don't do good with blood. And you know when you cut your tongue, it bleeds, Mm -hmm. whether it's a human, a dog, or whatever. Yeah. Ooh. And I went, I, I went running in there, and Nancy was leaning over the washing machine in the washroom, and I thought she, I said, well, who am I gonna help first and try to <laughs> get Gypsy or try to keep Nancy from passing out? Right. And uh, but she healed up, and it got because your tongue's the fastest healing thing in your body. I've heard that. It took several days for it to heal up, but uh, uh she said. I won't be doing this anymore. We'll be taking care of Gypsy to the groomer the whole time. <laughs> Gotta take it to the groomer. I don't know if there's a groomer for the type of grooming I was doing, though. So, Well, maybe, you know, if you need something groomed like that, maybe you ought to have Christy do it. <laughs> okay, yeah. That, mm-hmm. That's a good point. Like, like Nancy, when you told me to use the blow dryer and blow dry, instead of me doing it, I had Nancy yeah, yeah, do yeah. it to me, so. Yeah, we you could know, do that. Might, we could do that. Might be a lot safer. Yeah. Everything. And and more well, fun. Oh yeah, I'm telling. All right. Yeah. yeah. I'll think about it. I'll think about that, Dad. Well, Link, we got another email and it's from Rowan. Okay. And he said he wanted he asked me a question. He said, What was your mm, what was both your favorite music growing up and did you have a favorite artist? I know mine was, and it still is, the Beatles. I said, well, that's an easy Rowan, one. me and you don't have anything in common because I was growing up when the Beatles, I don't know how you're old you are, Rowan, but I never did like the Beatles. So, But that's fine. Everybody how likes could you not like, well, It's not fine. It's not fine, Dad. How could you not like the Beatles? Well, I just didn't like them back then. I like them a little bit more now in some of the music that I – Listen to they did, but I just you think they were just, just for sw- swooning teenage girls? Is that what you thought? Yeah, I could understand. I mean, that. when and that that's kind of what I was. I was at that age sw- trying to swoon teenage girls. Maybe I okay, you were like jealous. That. I yeah, get it. That might have been what it was. Who, who was your artist back then? Like high school. Uh, Probably my two favorite artists, and I talked about this a little bit, was uh, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles and Junior Walker and All Stars. And that was probably why, because the Beatles music and Motown music was just to- too totally. I don't know who Junior Walker and the All Stars are. Oh, man. What did they sing? Um, he had a. He played the. Uh, saxophone and man could he play the saxophone 
And then it, people found out that he could sing too, so they signed him. Besides him going around just playing the saxophone for people, and he had a song called "Shotgun." What? What's it's going? At, what? What? What does it take? It, yeah. What? What does it take? And Roadrunner was his three different biggest songs. Okay. So that sh- like shotgun. Yep. Zooming every time. That one. That one. Okay. That's it. All right, Junior Walker. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know who who mine was. I mean, in high school, that's when I got on my Merle Haggard fix and just got obsessed with Merle Haggard, like Rhett and I both, and we would just listen to him all the time. And once you discovered, we would go out, we would go to the the tape store, and we would just like, or Sky City or where or Walmart or wherever you'd get tapes, and we would like just look for tapes that we hadn't found yet. And there was so much to discover. So, uh, you know, and uh, I think it's well-founded. Maybe maybe the yeah. greatest country music entertainer of all time. Definitely definitely one, definitely in the top five. So I stand by it. But, yeah, it was, it was a bit of an interesting fixation. It wasn't like there was anybody else who was into him or, like, talking us, in, talking us into it. Oh, yeah, I always... Uh, I like Merle Haggard too, but I mean, it, you know, that was country and this was more Motown kind of music we listened to in the, mm-hmm. from 1960, when I was 65 to 1970, right along in there. So, but Link, I was, I was riding down the road today, coming home from work. Yeah. Going to get ready to, uh, do a, Get ready for the podcast and stuff today. In 94.9, had a song. They said, we're going to play a song. And it's a song with uh, Blake Shelton and Post Malone. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard it. You were surprised? And they got it playing, and they're playing it in all the beach music places and people are dancing to it just like the <laughs> song that we danced to with Keith Urban. Yeah, yeah. You want me to put in what's a good word for it? you? Pour, pour, what's the name of that pour song? Pour Me a Mother? Drink. Pour Me a Drink, yep. You like that song? Oh, I like it. Okay. Yeah. You relate to that? But I thought that was kind of, because I think you were kind of friends with Post Malone. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, know one another and I but I thought that was kind of ironic so I got you know I you know I, all kind of stuff kind of like it you you and red have all kind of stuff come up in your head I thought hell cre- hell Link's friends with post Malone and and I got the podcast and you're on it uh-huh. and I think he lives somewhere out in LA somewhere close by I said you know you might could Get in touch with him, and like we did with Jim Quick, we might have him on the show one day. Oh, okay. On Dispatching for Myrtle Beach. Now that he's gone country, you want to have him on the yeah. show? I see how it is. Now well, that no, I, now that they're I, shagging to some Post Malone, mm-hmm. Well, you want to be? I mean, you want to? And friends. I like country music too, and I like Blake Shelton. But I thought it was kind of ironic that, and Logan told me that this is not the first country. He's kind of. Going down the country music road right now. That's right. So, That's right. So, uh, you know, I'm just kind of trying to look look after our. Okay, yeah. Uh, I, I'll 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 look for an opportunity. We'll see. I'll see what we can do. Well, I'm I'm just asking. <laughs> yeah. I, but I, I thought that was kind of ironic because I knew you had brought up to me even I, a couple of years ago when we were. I think when we were in L.A. that you were going. I think you were going to see Post Malone. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And, well, there, there. Sometimes we'll go longer not seeing each other. Depends on he's 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 hard to pin down. He's all over the world. Oh yeah. But yeah, sometimes we 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 we'll usually reconnect at least yeah. once a year. So I'll say I'll I put in a good word be, for you. I, I just thought you'd be <laughs> interested because we've been. He's it's made his way to your to your radio radio airwaves. 
and Jim Quick was playing it on his show today. So uh, I thought that was pretty neat that uh, some of the some of the stuff we've done is kind of coming around full circle again. That's it. That's it. We all need to hang out. He'd like you. Well, that's for we sure. I can work that out. Okay. Hmm. It's time for another edition of Lights, Camera, and Some Southern Fried Action. All right, you remember we did the father-son scene from Star Wars, and uh, now I want to do one from Indiana Jones. I think it's it's, it's the third one, The Last Crusade. With uh, Have you seen that one? Yes. Where his his dad is played by? Sean... uh, Starts with a C. I know it starts with uh, Connery. Yeah, Sean Connery. James yeah. Bond, one of them. Yeah. Okay, James so yeah. do you have the you have the script in front of you? You can. I'll, I'll be Link Deanna Jones, and you can be Charles Jones Senior. Yeah. So we're in the we're in the castle room, and uh, Link Deanna and Charles are tied back to back in chairs. You remember this? Yep. All right. You ready? Here we go. Let's try and get these ropes loose. We start pulling at the ropes with great urgency. Can you try and reach into my left jacket pocket? Charles is able to wiggle his hand towards Link Deanna's coat pocket. Link, Link Deanna squirms his body around towards Charles's hand. Now, what exactly am I looking for here, son? <laughs> my lucky charm. Feels like a cigarette lighter. You best not be picking up bad habits, son. No, Dad. Try and burn through the ropes. Charles's fingers open the lighter and ignite the flame. Do it. Open the lighter, ignite the flame. There you go. And he's Scottish, I think, right? You got come yeah. on now. Well, ain't you sharper than a tack? That's a mighty fine idea. Well, you started you started real strong, and then now you're doing your own voice. Uh, well, I thought you told me to do this Southern, but okay. Okay, that's fair. Well, well ain't you sharper than a tack? That's a mighty fine idea. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Charles yelps as a cigarette lighter burns his hand. He drops yep. the lighter to the floor. Yeah, you got to yelp. Woo! Charles kicks at the lighter, trying to reach it, but cannot. The rug starts to burn. I don't know. Oh, oh Lord. I ought to tell you something. (laughs) Don't get sentimental now, Dad. Save it till we get out of here. No, son. It's burning. Like a brush fire in July. Look. Dad, we're not recording the podcast right now. We don't have time for me to try to decipher what you're trying to tell me. The chair is too. Well, this is bad. That would be correct. All right, move, move, rock your chair. Do what I do. They begin to rock their chairs, inching their way off the burning carpet. Link Deanna tries to communicate with Charles, but each time he calls him, the men turn their heads in opposite directions. <laughs> Dad! <laughs> Dad! Yeah. Dad can't read his lie when he's turning in opposite directions. What? Dad! What? <laughs> Dad! What in tarnation is it, son? (laughs) Head for the fireplace. Oh! Banging, rocking, and hopping their chairs. They work their way into the fireplace, the only safe place from the roaring fire. I think I can get these ropes off. That dog won't hunt. These ropes ropes are too tight. (laughs) Linked Deanna struggles to free his hands. His foot kicks out and accidentally hits a metal grill that operates a secret door. Whoops. The fireplace floor rotates like a lazy Susan, and Link Deanna and his father find themselves in the radio room. (sighs) Give me a shocked face, Dad. 
An enemy radio woman wearing headphones sits in an elaborate panel of dials, switches and meters and other stands over a map plotting coordinates. Suddenly, the woman looks up and spots Charles and Link Deanna. She screams. Logan. Ah! The others in the room turn to see Charles and Link Deanna. Two draw their revolvers and fire several shots at Charles and Link Deanna. Let's hear the shots, Dad. Bam! Bam! Link, only two, okay. Link, Deanna, and Charles rotate into the room, which is now an inferno. The carpet, drapes, and furniture are all ablaze. It's hot as Hades in here. I'm sweating like a whore in church. <laughs> Link, Deanna, finally breaks free. I'm out, Dad. And he immediately begins to untie his father. Atta boy. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> Yeah, it was good for you to do your own voice. That worked out better. <laughs> I've got, I got to add a boy. That was basically the whole reason we did that, you know, just to back you into that. Okay. All right, that's a good movie. I think I mean oh, I remember yeah. the scene where they're both they're both flirting with the same woman. I think it might have been right before that. Yeah, it was right before yeah. that. That's a good movie. That's a good father son movie, Dad. We should reenact the whole thing. Yeah. But we're well, out of time. Here we are. Yeah. Well, uh, Link, it's been a interesting show again today, and mm -hmm. I hope all you Myrtle Beasts enjoyed it and everything that's been going on. And it was fun having you all here with us today. And we'll be back next week for another one. And don't forget to follow, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts on YouTube. And while you're at it, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. And if you got a question, comment, or story you'd like to share with me, email me at ratherbeshagging53 at aol.com. And y'all have a great rest of your week, and we can't wait to fight a month to fire again next time. Mm hmm Dad. Yeah. Dad. Dad. Yep. What? What? <laughs> Love you. I love you. See you next week. Yep. <laughs>